Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so happy to have you here today. Before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed here that we don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content we have coming. Today's video, we're going to talk all about the different features that you get with Cricut Design Space Access, but we're not going to be using Design Space to do it. I'm going to show you how to use each of those features without paying for design space access, which is about $9.99 a month, or you can pay for the full year for $99, and I believe it's about 50 cents. That adds up. It's expensive, and there are definitely ways to get around it and some options that I feel work better and give you more options than Cricut Design Space. We're going to talk about the Create Sticker function, the Warping Tool, Background Remover, images, projects, fonts, so many things that you get if you pay for design space access, but you really don't need to pay for it in order to still have access to all of those fun features just in a little bit of a different way. Now I'll have links for full tutorials that are going to explain all the different features that I show you in much more detail, but I am going to give you a pretty good overview here in this video today. I'll also have timestamps in the video's description if you're looking for a specific feature that you can easily access super quickly so you don't have to scroll through the whole video. So let's go ahead and get started. So we don't have access. That's okay. If you want to do something similar to Create Sticker, it's actually a lot easier than you think it is. So the Create Sticker function, and I'll open it up just to show you, is that you can make printable stickers and what it can do is it can do a die cut sticker or it can do a kiss cut sticker where it only cuts the sticker itself and then it leaves the backing. But we can easily do those ourselves and we can even make them easy peel, which is way better than what Cricut can do. So what? let's say we have no access. Well, guess what? You still have the offset option because you still have Cricut. So we can use our offset option. That is not a access feature. So I'm gonna use the offset and I'll just leave it at 0.25 and click apply. Now, I am going to change my offset color in just a second, but what I want you to see first is this is going to be our sticker, this colored piece, which is our hamburger. And then the offset part is what we want to cut out multiple times. Now, what we'll have to do to trick the Cricut to do this is to actually duplicate our offset a few times. Usually with this, I tend to like to duplicate it usually about three to five times. It just kind of depends on the sticker paper that you're using, if you're using a laminate, anything like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my burger and drag it up to the top of my layers panel. That way it's on top of everybody. And I just wanna make sure that one's under there. Then select your entire design. Then I want you to go to align and center. Now what we'll do is we'll take all of our offsets and we're going to attach them. Now it'll make your burger go under them again, but don't worry, we'll move it in just a second. I'm gonna change the color to white because I don't want it to print any color. Now again, it's gonna look like you don't have anything on your screen. Right click on that box and send it to the back. Now you have the burger and the offset that's gonna cut multiple times. You can see all the offsets right here. It'll only cut once around your burger and multiple times around your offset, creating an easy peel sticker. Now before we hit make, we have to do one more thing. We wanna make sure that we're attaching the burger to all of the offsets. So you can just simply click attach. Now it's gonna look again like really nothing happened, but you'll see over here, you just have one layer. Now when I click make, what you'll see is you have your burger. Now to make it a little easier, just to help you guys see everything, let me change the color of this to like the gray, that way you can see it a little bit better. Now, if you look, when I click make, what it will do is it's going to cut the gray around that a couple of times. It'll cut it five times to make sure that it cuts through the backing. And then it'll only cut around our burger just one time. And by doing that, it is going to only cut that out so we have an easy peel sticker. We'll take the gray portion off and it will make it a super easy peel sticker. Now what's best about this compared to using the create sticker option is you're able to use any of your cut settings and you're not just stuck with the Cricut branded cut settings for this and you have just a lot more options. Also, it works a lot faster. So you don't have to have the Cricut access to do create sticker. 
One of the things that Design Space has offered to access members only is a layers option. And if you've seen the videos and I'll link them down below, it doesn't work great. Um, it kind of layers funny, but what we can do is we can actually use Design Space in a way that we can layer our own image. So you can see right here, this is all an image that I pulled apart, but I'm gonna show you how I do it with just a little bit simpler of an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and browse for my design that I wanna use. And for this one, I know it's in my Cricut folder and it's just a little penguin. I just use it because it's super easy to show you how you can pull apart the different colors of your design. Did I scroll past him? I did, he's right here. So we have this little penguin here. He's like four colors. He's black, white, dark yellow, and yellow. So if we wanna use this penguin, we could use that layering option with Cricut, but if we don't have access, there's a really easy way to upload this. Click continue. And you're gonna to need to do this in several steps. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna remove part of him. So for here, I'm gonna go with um, a 100 color tolerance. So you wanna change that color tolerance to 100. Then all I wanna do, let's remove anything that is not the yellow. So I'm gonna get rid of his black outline. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Now you will see you do have some little like dots left behind. Now you don't wanna remove these pieces because these pieces will layer on top of our yellow. But if you preview your single layer, you'll see that you have all these little dots. If that happens, you can just erase them using the little eraser tool, which you can make bigger, smaller, whatever you need to do. But usually you can just go around very quickly and you can just erase all of those little marks. Now this might take a little bit longer, but I do find that doing it this way gives me a much better result than having Cricut do the layering anyways, because their layering is a little bit questionable. So you would have to do that for each and every layer. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna select the single layer option and click continue. And then you just click upload and it will upload it into your design space. You'll need to do this for each of your versions. So we'll go through, we'll grab that penguin again. And this time we'll just keep the um, white. We'll keep the white section. So I'm gonna go click continue. I'm gonna change my color tolerance to 100. Sometimes 125 can work a little bit better. You may need to play with it based on your design. Now, you also need to think about how are we layering this. So for this one, I would personally layer it over like the eyeballs here. I would leave those, go to those feet, and then I'd get rid of his mouth and I would leave everything else. Then click apply and continue. And you wanna select the middle one again and click continue. And then just go ahead and upload it. Now, as I'm uploading, I like to personally change the colors just so that I keep track of where I'm at. So I'm gonna change those to white. I'm gonna change this one to yellow and we're just gonna continue. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of the layers and show you what it looks like when I'm done. Now you can see our penguin is uploaded. We've got all of our layers here. So it's just as simple as that. Now there are definitely online converters, but they don't find that they work great. I find that doing that is just a lot quicker, a lot easier, and you can do it completely free without using design space access. Now I'll link down below some videos I have about layering and all of that in case you wanna check those out. Now we all know that Cricut offers some standard shapes when it comes to what you can get for free, but they also have some fancier shapes, which they are only allowing design space access members to. But what's great? Welcome to Google. Um, so if I want a starburst shape, I can just search that and then I go to images and you can see that there's a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. So lots of different options here. So we can just use like this one here. What you wanna do is right click on it and save the image as, and I'm gonna save it in to my Cricut folder and I'm gonna call it Starburst Shape. And then we'll head over to Design Space and I'll show you how easy it is to upload. In Design Space, simply click Upload and then it's gonna open this up. You wanna click Upload Image and you can either browse for it or just drag and drop. But I'm just gonna browse for it. Choose the shape. Now it might take a second to load. If it does, that's fine. This one's gonna load pretty quick. Click Continue. And then this is our shape. Now you can preview the layer, it looks fine. And then we'll go ahead and click Apply and Continue. 
Now for this one, we want to do a single layer and click continue again. And then this is our shape. Then go ahead and click upload. Now, is that the best quality shape? Probably not, but I could have found better. You may need to take a few minutes to see if you can find a better shape, but honestly, that's pretty much what I wanted it to look like. It looks kind of more organic and that's what I wanted. And then you can see here in the shapes that we do have a similar kind of idea to that one right here, just a little bit different, but you really can find these shapes no problem, very easy. Just Google whatever shape you're looking for. Now, when it comes to images, Design Space has some pretty cute stuff, especially now that they've added other people designing for them, not just their overworked Design Space team. So I try to avoid looking at them if I didn't have access because you don't want to fall in love with something and can't use it or have to pay for it. So what I like to do is I'm going to go over to some of my favorite websites to find free designs. Now Cricut does offer lots of fonts, but a lot of them are Design Space Access Member only fonts. And I find them to be a little ugly, but it's just me. But what I love is that I can find all sorts of both free fonts. Um, I can also find fonts that are included with my subscription in here, but I'll list down below my website that is full of free font websites. But what I'm gonna do is go to freebies and free fonts and you can find so many fonts on the internet for free between Creative Fabrica, FontBundles.net, DuffFont.com, Google, all the places. There are so many fonts. So you can see here there's lots of beautiful fonts and these are all free fonts, meaning you can download these and use them and create really beautiful things. And it's very, very simple. So if we wanna take one of these fonts, let's go with this Sugar Peachy. We're going to click on that font and then all we simply have to do is click download here. It's going to ask us where we want to save our font and I'm going to put it into my font folder in my Cricut folder. I try to keep things pretty organized and then I'm going to go ahead and click save. Then to install it, what you'll need to do is click on the folder, the zipped folder, and then you need to click extract all and then click extract. Now this one does have multiple versions of the font. So you're going to click on each of the open type fonts and hold control on your keyboard. Then right click on one of the open type fonts and click install for all users. It's gonna install all of those fonts and then we can go over to Design Space and I'll show you what they look like. Now in Design Space, go ahead and open up a text box and then type whatever text you want it to be. I'm just gonna use my name. I'll move this over so that we can see better and I'm gonna pull down my font menu Go to system fonts and then you can just look up the word sugar and you'll see now we have sugar peachy right here. Now a lot of times when it has multiple versions of the font, design space is a little bit weird with it and you may need to mess with it a little and then sometimes it does weird things where it doesn't fully load your font, but that's okay. I'm gonna select this and now you'll see that we have a bold option and a regular option for this. The bold is super cute. But you can find lots of great fonts, lots of places. Like I said, I will link down below my huge list of places to get free fonts. Now, another thing with fonts is that you assume that with Cricut, you have to use their writing fonts to get a thin font to write with. So you would go over here to your Cricut fonts, use your filter, and then just select the writing ones. And then it'll bring up any of the ones that'll write really nice if you change it to a pen style. So you can see that that one writes super thin. But a lot of our free fonts can actually be writing fonts as well. You just have to choose thin fonts. So for example, a font like this one, which is called 10, would write really, really nicely. Even though it looks like a bubble letter, when it writes it out, it won't be. And I'll link down below a bunch of videos that are gonna help you with this, but I do have a video all about writing fonts. Like this one, absolutely silent single, perfect. I got this one for free. So I will link below all of my favorite free writing fonts for you. That way you're not spending money on Design Space Access when you can actually have beautiful, even nicer writing fonts for completely free. And the first one is a Creative Fabrica. That's one of my favorites. They always offer really great deals, but they also have a ton of freebies. I showed you their free fonts, but if you just go to all freebies, you'll see that there are tons and tons of stuff that isn't just fonts. So I'm gonna click right here where it says view all. And a lot of it is gonna be fonts at first just because that's what I typically have been looking for. So mine populates based on what I've been looking for. But you can see here we've got some PNG images. Here's some SVGs. 
we have some more PNGs. Here's some like fun watercolor backgrounds, more PNGs. There's so much to choose from. You can literally scroll through this for days. But one thing that I recommend and is the reason that I love Creative Fabrica so much is everything includes a commercial use license. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't sell your products, this is kind of not something that pertains to you. But if you are somebody who sells your designs, you want to make sure that you're using items that can contain that commercial use license. So with Creative Fabrica, they have that. So anything you use here that you place onto a physical product, you are legally allowed to sell. Now, like I said, they have tons in the freebies, but if you don't wanna pay for Design Space Access, I recommend instead getting the Creative Fabrica All Access. Now, currently while filming this, they are offering a really good deal with the $3.99 a month. So keep your eyes open. I always post when they offer that deal um, for their, um, like followers. So make sure to watch and I will post about it when they offer it if it's not currently running during the video premiere. I don't know when they're going to offer it. So I usually end up having to kind of like, you know, make the video, tell you guys to watch for it because they do run the special quite often. But you can see here, there's lots of great designs, Christmas designs. You can look at them like based on like a category. So they have so many things or you could just search for something. So let's say we want a Halloween bat. We can just search that and it's going to bring up all of the different Halloween bat designs that they have. So there's tons and tons and tons to choose from, to look through. I really, really love this site. So let's go ahead and just pick one of these so that you guys can see how easy it is to upload. So I'm going to choose, let me find one that I like. Oh, that one's really cute, but I want to do an SVG. This one's really cute. So let's do this candy holder so I can show you how to download this. So because I have all access, this is included in my subscription. So all I have to do is click download and then it's gonna ask me where to save it. It's just like when we did the font. So for this one, I'm gonna save it in my Halloween folder and click save. Now again, we need to make sure that we unzip that folder. So open your folder, you're gonna click extract all and then click extract. And then we're gonna head over to Design Space and I'll show you how to upload it. So over in Cricut Design Space, simply again, click upload, click your upload image. And for this one, we'll drag and drop. So I have my Halloween candy dome bat. I'm gonna open this and you'll see that there are several files. You've got instructions and then you have an SVG and a DXF. If your SVG shows as a Microsoft Edge or other web browser document, that's fine. That's just your SVG. You just haven't chosen a default program for them to open in. So here's our cute, adorable little bet that is so fun. So because this is an SVG, all we have to do is simply click continue and click upload. You don't have to do anything else fancy to it. You can literally just go from here. And our bat is all broken down, ready to go. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like with the layers. There are lots and lots of layers to this. Because this is a cardstock project, we don't really need to keep anything in place. We can literally just click make. So for this, I need to make sure that layer is attached. So what I need to do is I need to ungroup everything, um, at least so that we can um, like attach the sections that we need to. Like I said, it doesn't matter if other things are not attached, but there are gonna be some stuff that needs to be. You'll need to kind of play with your design and figure out what is what and what needs to be attached. You'll figure that out as you go. But there's our little bat, he's cute. I just wanted to show you how to upload it. I have other videos that really show you how to work with SVGs, but this is just kind of to show you how to upload and use things outside of Design Space so that you're not paying for Design Space access. Now, this is also what I would say would be something they would call a project in Design Space because this is a full item. It's not just a single image. This is actually made for a candy holder. So there are lots of options for you to use for both images and projects. That way you can kind of avoid paying the 10 plus dollars for Design Space access. Now, I'll show you another website that I really love to get images. Design Bundles is another great place to get images. However, not everything on their site would be included if you have a membership. They have what are called plus credits, um, which don't work for every item on the site. So keep that in mind. 
But what you can do is you can always check out their free designs. They have tons to choose from and they're always adding more. So we've got like teacher bundles. Um, we've got, I have no idea what that is. Oh, cheer, um, which definitely looks like it's cheer. Um, we have like a kitchen bundle. So there are lots. So these are all free items and these do include a commercial use license as well. Now, again, you can get lots of great things here. And again, they're things that Cricut would probably consider a project. Like this Easter wreath could be considered a project from Cricut. These water bottle like positive trackers, again, would be considered a project for Cricut. Now there are pages and pages to go through. So go through, check out what you want. They've got everything from clip art, procreate brushes, uh, backgrounds, illustrations, all the things. So give them a shot, see what you think. I really like using uh, design bundles. On the last Wednesday of the month, they do a dollar deal sale. And what's cool about this is that it is 44 deals for $1 a piece. And it's the last Wednesday of every month. So you'll find that there's lots of different things. There's font bundles, there's PNGs, there's layered paper projects, laser cut files, all sorts of stuff that you can use with your Cricut, your Silhouette, whatever it may be. But these are only a dollar versus paying $10. Um, and I always end up buying like one or two things. So you can always find these. They're really fun. They're usually some decent designs in here. And for a dollar, it's a really, really good deal. And again, they all include that commercial use license. So this one will be starting uh, the last Wednesday of the month. So be sure to check that out. I always go live here on YouTube and we go over all of the deals. Cricut offers a monogram maker but this is for access members only, as you can see up here with the green A. Now, I'm not a big monogrammer. I'm not sure that's even really super trendy anymore, at least not where I live. But you can see that they have a couple of different like options for your monogram, and then they have a bunch of frames. But I'm gonna show you a website that I use that's completely free to make monograms. We have uh, monogrammaker.com and you can make your monogram completely free. Uh, for this, you've got all sorts of like letter designs. You can go to the two letter ones as well, or you can also do one letter ones. So if you just wanna use ABC, that's fine. And then you can select a frame and they have all sorts of frames that you can use. And you don't even have to add a frame to it. You can always add that later if you want to, but then there's even fancier frames, which I think is so stinking cool. You can change your font color. You can do all sorts of things. Like look at how cute this is. You can put a little Santa hat on it, little elf hat. There's like stars and all sorts of things. So there's a lot that you can do with this for completely free. So you don't need Cricut Access to make a monogram. They have so many to choose from. They're so much cooler than the design space ones. So be sure to check out makemonogram.com, which I will link down below for you. Now, Design Space Access offers us a background remover. So I'm gonna show you two images and we'll use the background remover that they offer. And then I'm gonna show you another option. So what I'll do is I'm gonna browse for the image that I wanna use and I'm gonna use just one that's really colorful with like a full background and this is from the movie Soul. And I'm gonna click continue. And then what I wanna use is this automatic background remover. So I'm just gonna click remove background. And let's see how it performs and like what it does. Um, I do think that sometimes it's a little bit weird, but sometimes it works really great. But I feel like that's true for just about everything. For this image, I really only want these two, but it is nice that it kept these guys around as well. So it does work pretty well, but you can see that we've got a bit of an outline around them, but it doesn't look too bad. So what I wanna do now, let's go ahead and do the other image. I'm just gonna click back. I'm not gonna save them or anything. And I'm gonna find the other image that I wanna use. And this one is just a black and white uh, PNG image or a JPG. And this one is just a like Mickey head with some like animals in it and stuff. And it says Lion King, but it does have some pretty small lines, some pretty detailed items. So I'm gonna click remove background. Now again, this does seem to take a little while, so it's a little bit slow. What you're gonna notice is look, the entire inside of this is still here. So either I have to click and remove it, or I'm just gonna have a not removed background. But let me show you a website that works pretty great for working with your Cricut. The website is remove.bg and I'm gonna show you both of our images. I'm gonna upload my image and I already did them once just to test them, but I will show you what they do. So let's start with that image from Soul, 
which this is the one with Joe Gardner and Soul Cat. I don't remember its name. And then the little like, um, whatever they're called, the spirits. So you can see here that it did a pretty decent job. And actually, I think it did a better job as far as keeping like the details because this one kept the whiskers and the little butt fluff. So that's pretty good. And then all you have to do is simply click download. You can also download it um, with HD if you have an account with them. But honestly, downloading this way is fine. So I'm going to do that one. And then you can go down here if you want to do another image and click the little plus symbol. And then we can choose another image to do that with. And we'll do the Lion King head that we just did a second ago, which is this one. And it's going to remove the background on this one. And what I like here is, look, it removed the background behind the actual image. So I'm going to download this one as well. And I'll show you what they both look like in Design Space so that you can get an idea of why this works. And it's a perfect option for using. It's like I said, it's not foolproof for sure because removing backgrounds can be difficult. There are other programs that you can use things like Photoshop and Photopea, but if you are not super advanced, I want to make this pretty accessible to everyone. So remove.bg is a great option. Back over in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to go ahead and go back and I'm going to upload the um, Lion King image and the Joe Gardner image so you can see. Now keep in mind, in the design space didn't take out the parts that remove.bg did for our Lion King image. So that's kind of a bummer because we would have to do that by ourselves and that sort of defeats the whole purpose of having the remove background option. You can see here we've got our image. I'm going to go ahead and click continue and give it a second because it can be a little bit slow. Now in this area we won't have to do anything because we've already removed our background. So click apply and continue. And we're going to select this one right here in the center, which is our single layer cut. Click continue again. And then all we have to do is click upload. And this is going to put it right into our design space canvas so we can take a look at it. Here it is in design space. Now, currently it looks a little bit like a blobby, not as clean as you would like. But that's because when Design Space shows you a cut image, it's actually going to show you the outline of where it's cutting. So I'll show you really quick. So I'm just going to change the color. Do you see all those black outlines? When it cuts, it cuts where those black outlines are. So when you're looking at it on Design Space, it looks a little bit blobbier. So if I change it to a print then cut, you'll see how much cleaner the design gets. I'll change the color back. That way you can see it a little bit better, but you see it's a little bit cleaner this way. Now, like I said, remove.bg, not perfect, not um, you know the best thing you've ever seen, but it definitely will do the job. So here is a photo P and all you need to do is click open from a computer to find the design that you want to use for this. So I'm gonna go find that same design that we just used. I'm gonna select the design and it's gonna upload it. Now for this, what you're gonna to need to do is you'll go up to the top under select, you see where it says remove BG, that's remove background. Click on that and you'll see that it didn't get quite all of it. It didn't get like the center section or anything like that. So you can try doing it again and removing the background again. And sometimes it works and other times it doesn't get everything. But this time it did pretty good. You wanna to go to file and then you wanna export as, and then you can export it as a PNG. And you can just click save and it will save your image. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save it to. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in that Cricut folder and we're gonna call it uh, PP Lion King, that way I know where it's from, and click save. Now let's go ahead and put this one over in to Design Space. We're gonna upload, we're gonna go ahead and upload the image and find the Lion King one that we just did. Then we're gonna go ahead and continue. All we have to do is click apply and continue and then save it as the single layer and click continue. Now again, all you have to do is click upload and then it'll put it into your um, page here, into your canvas. Now, I wanna kinda of compare these, so I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna to try to make them so they're about the same size. And then I'm gonna change this one over to print then cut, just so you can see 
the difference. I think they look much cleaner from a photo pee. Do you see the difference in like, especially the stars, how much cleaner the stars are and how much cleaner like the edges are and the animals, but especially like into the tree and into the stars and even the words are a little bit nicer. So that's just another way to do this, but you have options and I would always just recommend trying different ones. Now with photo pee, you only have two remove background moments that you can use per 24 hours. So just keep that in mind if you don't pay for the full uh, program, but I think the program is pretty inexpensive. If you need to remove a background, it can be done without using design space. Now don't get afraid because we're in Inkscape. This is actually a really easy program for what we're gonna do, which is to create that wavy or warped text, which is something that Design Space decided should only be access only, but it's actually really easy to do it on your own. So the first thing that you're gonna do is, your Inkscape might look a little bit different than mine because I'm using 0.92 version, um, but your buttons should be relatively close to where mine are, the ones that we're going to be using because we're only gonna be doing text. So what you'll wanna do is you're gonna find the A, which is over on the left-hand side, and click on that. Then click anywhere on your screen, it doesn't really matter where, and put your text in. So I'm just gonna say groovy, groovy, oops, I want, I think I want it all capital. So let's make it groovy, groovy, groovy. So we're just gonna do three words. Um, you know what, let's, let's, let's make it a little bit longer. We'll do groovy man, why not, right? Um, so if you need to edit your text, you can just double click on it and then you can easily edit your text. Sometimes it's a little bit funny, um, just like any program, but we're just gonna do a groovy man. So now I wanna change my font, which is very similar to Design Space. There is a drop down menu up here at the top. You can just click the down arrow and it'll bring up all of your fonts. Now I have a ton of fonts on my computer, so it does take it a second to like populate all of them. Now I'm gonna use Cooper Black, but you can use any font that you want to. Do whatever you wanna do, it's truly up to you. You can make it however you want, use whatever font you want. Now I am gonna make it larger, so I wanna select the arrow at the top, and you'll see that it pulls up arrows around it. So in order to change the size on this, you're gonna hold Control on your keyboard or Command if you're on a Mac, and you're gonna just pull this out, and I'm just gonna make it big so that you guys can really see what we're doing. Now, another thing that I want to do to adjust this text is I want to change the line spacing. It's a little bit big. So double click on your text and you're going to see here that it brings up all of these different options. So what I like to do, there's a couple ways to do this and I'll show you a couple of them. So you've got vertical shift here, you have character rotation, you have a horizontal kerning, and then here you have a spacing between your letters and then this one is spacing between words. We want this vertical shift and we want it to be smaller. So I'm gonna use the down arrow to change it. Now, sometimes it takes forever and see how it's like changing only one part of it. I don't want it to do that. Um, that way. So I like to do it a completely different way, which I think works a lot better. So what I personally like to do is you're going to take and make sure your font is selected. You're going to go up to path and you're going to change the object to path, which is the very first option right here. Then you're going to go to object and you're going to ungroup it. And what you'll see now is you have a box around every letter. Now we can easily manipulate this so that these sit closer together. The other thing that we'll wanna do though is make sure that this little snapping tool is unclicked. You may need to find this if you're in a different program but, or a different version, but it should be in that upper right hand corner. So click it to turn it off. Then like in Design Space, click and hold to make a square and make sure it covers all of your letters. Then move your letters up to wherever you're happy with them that looks fine and then i'm going to do the same but i'm going to grab both lines now and just move them all up together and get them where i want them and i think that looks really good once i'm happy with this draw a square around your entire design then you're going to go back up to path and you want to choose union now you'll see that it makes a square around the entire thing all of your letters are not individual anymore now i'm going to size it back down so hold control and size it back down so that it fits within this little square. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna to go to File and I wanna click Export PNG Image 
and you'll see it brings up this box over here. So what we can do is we can choose where it goes by clicking export as, and it should open up a folder to ask you where you want to save it. For this, I'm gonna save it into my Cricut folder and I'm just gonna call it Groovy Man and save. Now that did not fully export it. You have one more step to do and that is to click export. Now we've got our PNG and we're gonna head over to our wavy font generator. I'll link this down below, but this is at FontMeme and they have a ton of cool generators. But what we'll do is we're gonna take our image, we're gonna upload our image. You can click here and then it should be in your quick access and you're gonna choose your groovy man. And then what you'll see is you've got all these different preset waves that you can choose from. And you can even do a custom where you change the degree of your wave, you can change the amount of your wave, all sorts of stuff. So if I change all that, you'll see now it looks really crazy because I did like a ton of wave amount, but like you can go down to like six. Let's try that. And you can just see it, it looks crazy. It's, it's just how it is because I messed with it. But you can do like their preset ones and you'll see that it makes it wavy and they've got a bunch of different preset ones. So we like this one. That one's fine. I'm good with that. Now all we have to do is you can see like it shows you what it looks like. You can right click on it and save the image as and again we can save it as Groovy Man. We'll call this one Groovy Man 2 and we'll head over to Cricut Design Space and upload it. Over in Design Space, again, click Upload, Upload Image, and then browse for the design that you have that we just created, the Groovy Man 2. And it's gonna upload it, no problem. You can see right there, and then click um, Continue. We don't have to do anything to this. There's no background, so click Apply and Continue again. Choose the single layer option if you wanna cut it with your vinyl or whatever, HTV. Then you're gonna go ahead and click Upload. And now you have this really cool design. Now what's great about doing it this way versus using Cricut is I'm able to manipulate this. I can slice this, I can contour it, I can do all sorts of things to this that you cannot do if you use Cricut Design Space's wavy font generator or their warp generator. So that's what's really great about doing it this way. You can also do images this way too. So if I wanted to add like smiley faces or whatever, I could do that and it will wavy font them too. It'll wave them in to our design. So it's a really great project. It's really great process, super simple. And I know, like I said, Inkscape can be a little bit intimidating, but to use a font in it is a great way to introduce yourself. You can download Inkscape at inkscape.org, completely free. I do use the 0.92 version. It's just the one that I found works the best for my computer, but you can use the newer version if you prefer, but everything should be fairly in the same spot. And I'll also link the full tutorial that I did with this that gives you a lot more detail on how I did this, different ways to do this. That way you can do it, you know, whichever way you're more comfortable with. But I do have a full tutorial on doing a wavy or warp font. And I'll link a bunch of helpful tutorials down below to help you use your Cricut without Design Space access. So now that I've gone over all of the features of Access as far as the different tools that you get, I wanna talk about some of the non-tool-like features that Design Space Access does offer you. So if you're somebody who shops on the Cricut website a lot, which I am not, I don't use their materials, you do get a 10% discount, which if you shop there a lot, can actually pay for your Design Space Access to begin with. So that's something you wanna think about. The other thing that I didn't really go over was collections, and that's just a way to organize your uploads and your projects and things in Design Space. I'll link below a video all about collections when it came out, but Again, not something that I feel is necessarily worth the $10. I keep everything pretty organized in my computer and I'll link a video to show you how I organize all of my files and stuff as well. Also, a big thing that I want you to remember is that not all of the features are available if you use the app versus if you use the software on a computer or laptop. So if you're on a like a, an app, I don't think the background remover is available and I think there's one other item which might be create sticker, but I'm not sure. I don't use the app personally. I find it kind of clunky. Uh, but that is something to think about too, is if you're an app user, there's some stuff that you're still not getting access to. And one other thing is that you do get access to exclusive mystery boxes 
from Cricut, which you have to shop at the Cricut website. And those can sometimes contain cuties, and I'll put a little picture of a cutie right here. I have several of these little things. They're really just vinyl figures. They're fun to collect, but they're not valued really anything. And I don't know if it's really worth the money to me to have to buy the mystery box with a bunch of materials that I won't use just to get the little cutie that I have. Also, another thing to keep in mind is if you have Design Space Access currently and you've used images that are Design Space Access only that you have in your projects and things, once you cancel that, you're going to lose access to those. You'll have to pay to use those if you use them again. But that is one reason that I always say I don't like using a lot of Design Space stuff to design with because then it doesn't belong to you. If you use the websites that I list here, up in this, I'll list them up in this corner and then I'll list some down in the video's description as well. Those are items that you can use inside Design Space, outside of Design Space, and a lot of those are going to contain the commercial use license, meaning that you can sell products that you made with those. Now I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today to learn a little bit more about how you can make all of the features in Design Space Access work for you without actually using them in Design Space. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. And if maybe I missed something that you want to know how to do, let me know. I'm happy to make some more tutorials for you guys. Be sure to check out all the links down below because those will have full tutorials, all the things that I've spoken about, websites for free SVGs, and so much more. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting.